Good morning, family of God. I thank you, brothers, for what we heard from you, especially our responsibility on building the church. Please turn with me to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. By God's grace, I am trying to die to the king over my life, the self-will that rules my life. For me, King Uzziah is the old man, the Adamic nature which reigns over me. Yesterday during the brother's morning prayer, the Lord revealed himself a little bit to me. I earnestly pray for more a revelation from the Lord. Just like John, I saw in spirit the majesty and purity of Jesus Christ. In Revelation 1.16, his face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. In chapter 21, verse 2, we read the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. In Matthew 17, 2, he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Even his garment was pure. That is why I think the woman with the bleeding issue was instantly healed by the power gone out from him through his cloak, C-L-O-S-E-K. Even his hair was pure. He had, he had and still has such a pure heart and eyes that any woman could come to him at any time. Every part of Jesus is so virtuous. So my prayer is, Lord Jesus, give me your eyes to look others with purity, your tongue to talk graciously, your legs to walk in your footsteps, your hands to work for your kingdom. Give me your spirit to empower me. With the seraphs I call out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. Praise the Lord, family. Um, our family got a puppy. Um, I'd say... Three weeks ago, we have been uh, we have had a pump for three weeks ago, and um, it's amazing how you know God even um, speaks uh, through puppies. You know, to my to my mind, it's amazing. So, um, what I've learned this past uh, three weeks is that um, you know I we we be, we are potty training our, our our puppy, so we have to constantly take them out. You know, to 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 do number one and number two. And um, it's amazing that uh, every time I take I take him out to do number two, um, you know I you know I really when I see the number two, I mean I'm just, I mean it's nasty, it stinks, is you know, I I just wanted to get rid of it, um, and so you know I take it and I put it in the garbage, and sometimes I feel like I feel like not even to put it in the garbage because it's gonna stink the garbage. I feel like man, can I just get rid of this like this like go like this and the thing disappears right. Um, but no, I, I, it's, you know, it, it doesn't go, it doesn't go any, it doesn't go nowhere. It's, it's there. And if I don't, if I don't do something, it's just going to stay there. What I've learned is that, um, in my, I want my desire, um, um, or oh, I want all the distractions in my life to be the exact same way. All the worldly things um, that comes in my way, all the riches of the world and all the approvals of men and all the comfort of money and everything that uh, that the world um, 
uh, offers me anything that will separate me from Christ, I want it to be just like that. Something that I don't even want to touch it. And uh, I want to just disappear. I just want to go away. And even if I put anywhere around my, around my life, it's going to stink at everything. And I want that to happen. Um, and I, I feel that, uh, you know, um, the Lord showed it to me in a practical way what it is that um, I need to do the things of this world. Um, and also I learned that it, it, the reason why I repose uh, uh, poop is because the value of number two is zero. I mean, it's less than zero. The value of it is less than zero. That's why I don't want it. And when I look at the world and the, the, what the money does to, 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 you know, to people's life and what the world does, if I, am, if, you know, if, I, if I want that, it's because I'm putting a value on that specific uh, money or comfort. That's a value that I put in it. And I want zero value as the same way as, as a poop for me, it's, um, it's considered as, as a zero value. Another thing, too, that I just, just, just to, to finalize is that God is always, always, always speaking. I'm realizing that, um, you know, that uh, it's, it's like a radio station. If you turn on the radio station and you tune in, God is speaking. Always, always, always. And there's a lot of other um, radio stations going on. Um, now the radio station of the Lord, radio station of the world, radio station of work, radio station of, uh, of, um, of many things. And um, it's up to me to turn on the radio and tune in to his radio station because there's many other ones out there. And um, I praise that uh, the Lord is, is drawing me to his radio station. I wanted to keep it that way. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Usually, um, when God speaks to me, when I'm in His Word, it's uh, usually in the form of questions. Um, part of that, anyway, is is questions. And I just wanted to share some things in regards to embracing His sovereignty, embracing His plans, and uh, like Jeremy said, having a sense of urgency about that. And so here's some things I wanted to share about that. Because I believe I can know a lot of things about God, and I know I do. Not a lot of things about God, but the things I do believe about Him. I can know that He's loving. I can know that He's merciful. I can know He's forgiving. I can know that uh, He'll have mercy on me and that He'll help me. Uh, but sometimes when I don't take sin seriously, I can be just like the demons who can shudder and know that there's a God, maybe even fear more than I do, and they don't shudder. And uh, so for me, that shuddering is not taking sin seriously. And um, so the question came to me was, do I really believe more than anyone on earth that I need God less than them? Or does, does anybody on earth need God more than I do? And... Uh, you know, even more than my spouse, more than my kids, more than anybody I have a burden for. Um, is there even a speck or even a hint of they need Jesus more than I do? And it usually comes out in circumstances. Um, I'm helping them come through or even myself. Um, so uh, the scripture in 1 Timothy um, chapter 1. So 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16 says, It is a trustworthy statement deserving of all full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul says, and this is what struck me. I didn't know he said it twice in two verses, but he says it here. To save sinners among whom I am foremost, first of all. And I said, really, Paul? The first, the foremost, of all sinners, uh, uh, child abusers, murderers, rapists, you're, you're really the first before all them? And he says, yeah. Verse 16, he says, for this reason, I found mercy. So this heart he had, God said, I'm going to give you mercy because of that. He says, so that in me, as the foremost, he says it again, it's the foremost, the number one sinner. And he had been with people, you know, on his journeys that um, I'm sure he saw some vile folks, even uh, hypocrites in the church and all that. He says, I'm the first. He says that Jesus might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe for eternal life. In Romans 3.23, we all know that verse. We can almost recite it together. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I said, we all need Jesus. I said, for one simple reason, we're all sinners. 
And um, I thought about a terminally ill person. A terminally ill person wants to be made well. They will run to see the doctor. His whole life, his whole mind is filled with being made well. He doesn't have to remember he has a terminally ill disease. It's what he deals with constantly. And I saw the heart of the lepers in um, Luke 17. Um, they were like this. They came to Jesus, they saw their need, and they saw themselves as desperate uh, to get to Jesus. And they made haste, um, and they believed, too, that, that he would help them. So I said, some believers, even some part of my heart sometimes, have a tendency to be tendency to be so hard on others. They don't cut anybody slack. And they think, surely I can't be involved in any of the sins that they are. And I think one of the answers for this is, or a good attitude, a good lesson is, one of the lepers that came back, he remember there were 10, but only one came back. And turning back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell at his feet, verse 16, he fell on his face, or sorry, he fell on his face at his feet, and, they, and he gave thanks to the Lord. And I said, is that my response to Jesus? You know, is, is that the posture of my heart when I am spending time with him? And is it, Lord, thank you for helping me through this? Is there, is there a reverence that I want to give more and more and more and more to him? And God says, I'm sovereign enough to make you well. Are you desperate enough to be made well every day? God says, I'm willing. The question is, are you willing? I'm available to help you more than you want to be made well. Do I believe just as much as God can give me? You know, I've talked a lot about my job. And he said, do you believe just as much as I can meet a job need for you? That or any outward need, um, do I believe just as much He can give me grace for the spiritual need, and because He's sovereign. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I have uh, timed this so I have 29 seconds if I don't cry. <laughs> Left over. We try and get it in four minutes. And that does a work in us too. So I was amazed it was under four minutes. I've been here since before my uh, uh, surgery. I had uh, breast cancer surgery and it was very successful. And uh, so I wanna, today I want to give glory to our God and Father to Jesus, his son, my savior, and the Holy Spirit for my healing from cancer and the work they have done in me and through all of you. I believe I have reached out and I touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and instead of instant healing, he has given me grace to have faith in the long process to get it. The sincere love shown to uh, Roger and I throughout this trial from the body of Christ here at, at NCCF has been such an integral part of that process of which I am still in. Yes, I have some pain from my surgery still and still struggling with side effects from the five months of chemotherapy, and I have 33 sessions of radiation to go. But... I am now equipped with more of his love and patience than ever before because of his grace and the mercy he has shown me through all of you. And now my beloved family, the ministering of his word and the messages through this pulpit sent to me via um, uh, the computer, the precious and effectual prayers for me, the children's artwork and cards, and cards from my uh, friends here filled with words of encouragement, all the nummy meals sent and brought to us from your homes <laughs> and um, to ours, and your visits to my home, you're driving me to appointments so lovingly. Uh, I can't drive during chemo. Sitting with me during my chemo sessions and during my surgery, uh, praying for me in the waiting room, and I had a, a pre-op nurse, 26-year veteran. Uh, her name was Grace. She was a Christian. And she ministered to me as well. And that was God. 
and they've all strengthened me in my inner man to be strong while I was weak. And um, I want to share also my New Year's word because I wasn't here to do that, and so that doesn't give me an extra minute, but I'll do it. This is in James. My word was in James 1. Two through four. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance or patience in the New King James have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So I know God allowed this process, this long process, to create a new patience in me and a new appreciation in the love of, of God for his body. And I want to also read in Romans 12, verses 9 through 13, the fulfillment of his word in this body. Verse 9, starting in 9, let love be without hypocrisy, or let your love be sincere without wax. Hate or abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, and this is be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit and serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, pers persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, and um, practicing hospitality and bringing food to those who can't cook right now. <laughs> so I so appreciate all of you, and I give glory because to God because I, I actually, at Stanford South Bay, it's a new facility, um, was able to give glory to God there and reach out to others with joy because you gave me the love. So I was able to um, be strengthened to love others there, and his witness was there. So praise God. <laughs>